Hi everyone, what do you think is the most important part of a PhD personal statement? Do you think it's how smart you are? Do you think it's how great your grades were? Or how much you know about the field? Or how passionate you are about the field? Actually, it's none of that. The core part of a PhD personal statement is actually the research experience, and that will normally form the most of it. I'd say this is probably the most important video to watch when it comes to personal statements. Because think about it, a PhD is about research. So if you display that you can already do research, then it's hard for them to not take you. Do you know what I mean? So the next question you might have is how much research experience do you actually need to do a PhD? And the answer is not that much. One undergraduate research project is generally enough. I know a friend uh, who did the same undergraduate course, the BSc in Biomedical Sciences at Queen Mary with me, and she got into Oxford straight after without doing a master's. On the other hand, when I applied to Oxford, I had uh, three research projects. One was a summer internship I did in the second year of my undergrad. The other was my final year undergrad research project. And the third was my master's research project. But that's not to say that you need three pieces of research experience. It just goes to show that she was really good at communicating how much she learned and how good she was at research with just one research project. So if you can do that, then that's enough. Uh, did she have any publications? No. Did I have any publications? No. Uh, so publications are not that important if you want to get onto a PhD program, even for really competitive ones like the one at Oxford. So in the previous videos, we talked about other components of personal statement, for example, how to brainstorm, how to start your personal statement, and capture their attention right from the beginning. So if you haven't watched those videos, do check out the playlist that's linked over here, I think, or there, I'm not sure, wherever YouTube puts the little bubbles. So now we continue reading through my personal statement and I'm going to use it to show you how to actually explain your research. So continue watching and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Do leave this a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and I'll be posting more soon. Uh, also let me know in the comments if you'd like me to make videos on specific topics. Thanks and catch you in another video. So the next two biggest paragraphs of my personal statement were about my research experience because that's what they asked for. So um, this was my first project, so I mentioned it first. I was one of the 21 students selected from around Europe to conduct research at the University of Cambridge as part of the highly competitive Amgen Scholars Program in the summer of 2016. So obviously, you know, using words like highly competitive and stuff like that, it, it does tell them that, okay, you have already been involved in things that were competitive and been selected, you know, through a rigorous thing so that automatically tells them that you know this candidate is worth keeping in mind um and so my project aimed to explore the role of piezo one a mechanosensitive ion channel in stem cell lineage specification using mouse embryonic stem cells as a model now this is a lot of scientific jargon but because i'm applying to you know a science program and these supervisors will generally know these words I can mention the specific details um, and that's very important to do as well. Tell them what you did, you know, because they asked about your research experience. So as it is a recently identified protein, antibodies against piezo one were not very specific and the immunocytochemistry protocol needed significant optimization. So now this is telling them exactly what I then did. You know, it doesn't just generally talk about the project, but it gives very specific examples of the challenges that I faced, you know, that, oh, it was recently identified, you know, we couldn't really work well with the with the uh, protein and stuff like that. Then alongside the optimization, I suggested to use qPCR to study piezo one levels and use flow cytometry to study the effect of piezo one inhibition on the differentiated state of the cells. So um, it doesn't matter if you can't understand any of that, it's fine. The main thing to pick out from here is that I'm I'm talking about specific techniques that I used, qPCR, flow cytometry, and this bit I suggested, you know, it shows that you took initiative and you contributed, not just I was told to do this or I did this, but it shows a bit more. So every word, you know, really think about uh, that. And then I, I drive home the point with the next line, I thus learned to take initiative and drive my own learning, which is exactly what is needed with the PhD. So already, you know, I hope that people reading the statement were like, okay, the, this person takes initiative in their own project, you know? Um, 
And but if I just wrote this line um, during this project, I learned to take initiative and drive my own learning. That is that would have been useless without the actual example I gave because anybody can make this stuff up, you know, like, oh, I was so great in this project, but give them an example of, as proof and as evidence of of this bit. And then uh, lastly, I presented my findings as a poster at the Amgen Scholar Symposium and later at the Physics of Living Matter conference at Cambridge being the only undergraduate presenting. And this happened because there was this conference and I asked my supervisor if I could apply uh, to present a poster and he never got back to me and I just applied anyway, which you probably shouldn't do. And then people in the lab, when I asked them, they were like, I think you're a bit too young to present and it's just an undergraduate project. But I was like, oh, I can just apply and they selected it. And I, I don't think they had a very, um, you know, specific criteria of selecting people, but um, if you apply, you're more likely to be selected. And also this line shows a very important skill in research, which is communication and presenting, because you will be asked to present your findings, you know, at poster as a poster or in conferences, stuff like that. So again, it shows that, okay, this person has that experience, is ready to do that during a PhD. Then for my, uh, then I talked about my other research project, which was my undergraduate research project. So, uh, talking more about your research experience, which, as I mentioned before, should should be the focus according to these criteria for my program. So I conducted my undergraduate research project at Dr. Kermagant's lab at the Barks Cancer Institute, where I explored the role of CMET in chemo resistance in ovarian cancer. As my research had potential for clinical impact, I was enthused to delve deep into the research question, critically analyze our hypothesis and support designs of additional experiments. So with the first line, when you're talking about the research experience here, I didn't just describe my research experience, but I used it to demonstrate what I learned, uh, or wait, well, not in this line, but in general, when you're talking about research experience, don't just describe it, use it to demonstrate what you have learned and what you've gained and what you've contributed and how you did things differently and also what skills you now have for a PhD. And then look at this word, I was enthused to delve deep, like, you know, enthusiasm, that's important. They they actually, this, this sort of biases or this does impact how you come across at interviews because if they can see that you're actually enthusiastic about the research project that you know conveys that you're actually interested you will actually you know um do um you know we put in the effort and stuff like that then again uh skills completely relevant for a phd critically analyze our hypothesis suggest designs of additional experiments is exactly what you do in a phd then after widely reviewing the literature I postulated a number of molecular mechanisms whereby semen activation could contribute to chemo resistance, which I'm now in the process of compiling into a review article for publication. So in a single line, I could have not used this bit and just said I postulated, but then I wanted to make sure I said after widely reviewing the literature, because again, shows them a skill that I have. Um, then um, another thing you have to do as an academic is obviously publication. So just talking about how you're compiling and you're in the process. This review article never ended up getting written or published or anything like that. Um, but, you know, at the time I was working on it, so I, I did put it in. Then uh, more driving home sentences, which um, this critical reading also helped me to identify the potential drawbacks of our experiments. Now, I could have just said this helped me to identify, but I said this critical reading, you know, it's just like sort of these buzzwords and, and relevant buzzwords that you should sort of include because now they're like, oh, great, they can't just review the literature, they can critically read the literature. And so uh, potential drawbacks of our experiment, not testing directly the synergistic effect between CMET inhibitors and chemotherapy, not using a clinically relevant CMET inhibitor, using a cell line that was not stably chemo resistant and blah, blah. So again, specific examples, because anybody can say, oh yeah, I did some critical reading and I did, and these were some drawbacks, but you have to back it up with evidence. That's probably the most important bit. So, ooh, some, another paragraph. Well, it's the previous paragraph on research experience continued. 
Um, so uh, I was also able to pinpoint the strong suit of our experiment over previous studies, uh, performing experiments in suspension and better modeling clinically acquired resistance, blah, blah, blah. So again, you know, specific examples, which gives evidence and um, you're not just saying random stuff without any evidence or backing up. Then when faced with the inevitable challenges in research, I learned to remain persistent and open-minded. So this is something they look for in interviews. Almost every interview that I, I had attended for PhD applications asked me in some form of another, how do you cope with failure or can, what happens you know, what, what was a time that was really challenging for you and what did you do to overcome it? Stuff like that. So they want to see that you have that persistence and that you do cope in failure because within research, there is just 90% of the time your experiments fail. So you need to be able to cope with that. Um, for example, and then again, example, I was able to use results from even failed experiments in the project to provide more evidence for our hypothesis and to argue later that the inconclusive results were not due to the pharmacological inhibitors off target effects. So this bit shows creativity. Uh, and so you can see now, you know, every line I'm like, okay, what, what am I highlighting here? What does this show? What does this show? It's very intentional. Then here, through both projects, I came to really enjoy the process of scientific discovery, the intellectual challenge, the critical thinking, the repeated learning from mistakes, the ensuing elation upon a success, and the benefits of discussion. So again, enjoy, so I, enthusiasm, which is always a great thing to show. And if you enjoy the process of research, you're more likely to actually go through with the PhD towards the very end because things get really tough. But if you enjoy um, repeated learning from mistakes, then you know they're more likely to, to select you over someone who hates that process. And then I also enjoyed communicating my findings in an oral presentation to a wider audience at the British Conference of Undergraduate Research. So again, more examples of how I communicated. 